Hey, hey, my creative friends. I was actually wondering if I was going to make it tonight. We just got home about 20, 30 minutes ago um, from being all gone all day long, driving all over Denmark and doing a few things. So I am glad I'm here. And um, let's see. We traveled about two hours from Copenhagen onto, I guess Denmark is three islands and we're on the closest one to Sweden. And then we traveled over to the one in between the big island and um, the one we're on. So we traveled into the middle middle one. But, and I we, we went over the longest bridge I have ever been on, and, but it was really cool. It was really, I should check how long the bridge is, but it's just amazing to see this bridge in the middle of this the this this body of water anyways it was great um so to start off tonight alan does this this thing with me every time something some things will come up and he will say it's princess and the pea he always calls me princess and the pea and um it's because a lot of times i will just um gravitate toward the more expensive fine expensive expensive <laughs> expensive finer things in life like just drawn to it i'll we'll be in a room of things and i can't help it that's the one i pick is the most expensive and also because i do little things like i don't want to drink my water without ice in it or i really don't want leftovers or those kinds of things so he always goes well princess and the pea princess and the pea well, Hans Christensen Anderson wrote that story, and we went to visit his home and the museum um, in Odense, O-D-E-N-S-E, -E, and I am positive I am not pronouncing that right. But we went to go visit those today, and that was a fun little excursion that we did. Um, his home was very tiny. He was very, very poor, and... Um, had humble beginnings and his house was very tiny and um it, it i think there was an upstairs but they only let us go in through the the bottom floor and the kitchen was like i want to say six by six maybe i mean it was tiny as well and that and that was just the that was the space. I mean, it was felt smaller than that because of the cupboard and the oven, the st oven thing and things like that. But it, he was very, it had a very poor home. He was the only child. Well, they say he was the only child, but he actually had a half sister. His mother um, uh, had been married and I believe he died. And so he had a half sister that was six years older than he was, but he never really knew her. She lived um, further away in the north and so with some other family so he never really knew her but a lot of time because this is what the lady would at the at the museum was telling me while i was waiting for alan because parking in denmark is a same yeah it's just awful awful we already got a ticket too i don't even want to talk about that anyway so this lady was telling me things about um hans christian uh, hans christian anderson I always want to say Christensen. It just feels like uh, I got to say more of his name, but it's not his name. Han Christian, Hans Christian Anderson. So she was telling me different things about him. And that's where the story of the sister came up because most of the things I read said he um, was an only child. And technically, I guess, you know, he was the only child of, of those parents. So um, what else? Uh, he wrote, oh, he lived in this one house until he was from two to 14 years. And he had a fond, he had fond memories of his upbringing and, and the, the kind of the seedbed for his imagination. Um, he wrote um, poems, travelogues, novels, plays, but he was best known for his fairy tales. And um, he also was creative in the way that he, he liked plays. He was an actor, he was a singer, um, really liked singing and was a soprano i believe until his voice changed and so after that he just somebody told him he, that, that the, at the place he was singing at they told him he basically he didn't have a future in singing but he was really good with poems and writing and so he that's the the path that he took 
And um, it, and it's interesting because his first set of fairy tales that he published didn't sell well, and that was 1835. They didn't sell well, but he kept on writing. And that's the thing is sometimes we don't have success, but and oftentimes we don't have success right off, but he just kept on writing. And then in 1845, when his some of his stories were translated, then they really took off and they took off throughout Europe and he really became celebrated then. So, but I mean, we read it in a matter of two sentences, 30 second read, but that was a 10 year period that he didn't have the success that he had initially wanted, any of us. We don't have the success we initially want. And, um, but we work at it, we still work at it. And um, it's interesting because he uh, initially didn't do well in school. He didn't like school, he thought it was awful. <clears throat> And he was abused by his headmaster. And so everything about the young school, young schooling was awful to him, which made me think of this quote. It's um, uh, from the Real Artist Don't Starve. Um, Torrance also observed how creative individuals tended to struggle in systems that forced them to comply with to rules they didn't understand. And basically went on to talk about how kids, some creative people have a terrible time in school. They don't fit in, they don't want to follow the rules, they don't understand why. It's, it's not uncommon for a creative kid to have that kind of association with school. Luckily, he was able to get out of school and, and still, um, go on to further his education and to to become a writer and he has like three over three thousand over three thousand three hundred works literary works that's huge the gal at the museum told me she he was the most celebrated author ever i'm not sure about that but she believed it <laughs> but he it does play out that he wrote prolifically he didn't marry um and didn't have kids, though he was close to other families that he knew and their children. So one of the things that really struck me and is part of our tip tonight is that a lot of his stories, um, he felt like an outcast, um, he an outsider. He didn't feel um, he didn't feel part of things, and a lot of his stories, a lot of his stories that he wrote were autobiographical. And so he took those feelings and he wasn't afraid. That's what they say as, a, as him as a writer. He wasn't afraid to have a sad ending. He wasn't afraid to delve into um, real feelings and ideas, even though they were for children. And that's why they were liked by adults as well. But he didn't have that problem of, of not wanting to visit that. And a lot of his sadder tales the feelings come from himself. Um, he didn't have luck in love, and it was said that the Nightingale was written because of his passion for Jenny Lind, that he she didn't reciprocate because reciprocate she felt like he was a brother. So that was, you know, an, an, a way to um, tell his story in a different way or have his story come across in a in a different way and then also the lady at the museum was telling us about the ugly duckling she said he wrote that story about himself because he had big feet he was tall i think six and a half feet tall and for that time period he was he really stuck out and so he really had these feelings of being uncomfortable in his own skin <clears throat> and being uncomfortable with who he was and he was extremely shy and he didn't know how to fit in socially and so his he, those things came across in his stories and that's the tip tonight is to own your own story own your own story and let it let it um it, it, what's the word let it kind of, uh, be part of what you create be part of um, inform. That's the word I'm looking for. I knew it would come. Inform. Let your story inform your creative journey. 
Let it inform the things you you create and the ways you create them. Let it be part of it. Yesterday I said own your own strengths. Well, own your own stories because nobody's stories are like yours. Nobody's, the, nobody's combination of stories is exactly like yours. Um, so own those stories and own those feelings. Uh, there was another video I talked about feelings. Um, it's, it's those things that make us totally unique and how we can turn them into um, an outlet of expression, of creative expression. So own your own stories. Um, for me, it just, I can't help but for one of my stories is, well, a couple of my stories, I'm a mom, a mom with a lot of kids. I know what that life is like. And it doesn't matter if you haven't had eight kids, I can relate to you if you have two. You can relate to me as well. We can relate to each other with those stories of being a mom, a stay-at-home mom, and trying to do all the things that we want to do, yet still take care of ourselves. I can um, relate to a certain stories of, of minority, being, being on the brown side. So the experiences I've had with that. I can particularly... Um, Oh, and the story of Layla passing away and how that changed all of our family and how now it informs the direction I go in and, and how I've turned to creativity more, more than I think is more important than what art you make. Um, and we're talking about professionals where you're not doing it professionally, but the whole experience that I had with her dying made me appreciate and understand how creativity really fed me. So that's part of my story. It's that's and that's how I own it. And sometimes it's I feel like it's awkward to talk about it, but but it's who I am now. It's it's in my DNA now. It's I can't get away from it. It's not it's not going to ever change or go away. So it's who I am. So I I'm I have in the last few years tried to embrace that and own that and so that's I mean I don't do it perfectly but it's still I think value to own your stories and Hans Christensen and not I'm Christensen Hans Christian Anderson did that he embraced those feelings and let them come out naturally I don't know if they were painful to do but he went through that process nonetheless and it makes his stories more enduring and endearing so that is the tip own your stories and is share your stories. Share something about you that informs you in a way um, that's unmistakable to you. It could be school. It could be, it could, I don't know what it could be. You tell me what it can be. And even after, you don't have to be watching me live in order to share. So be sure to share. Um, and I will tell you more about um, Denmark tomorrow when I share some more things and it's our last day tomorrow in in Denmark so we're going to get the last few things done that we want to and remember you have a creative heartbeat so listen for it and I will see you tomorrow <laughs>